So I made a little demo here. Hello. So we're in the same spot we've been the last couple of weeks. Let's see. I made a little display here. So yeah, I do like that. So first we'll see who's here. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna weave. No, this is needle binding. I should weave though. I'm talking to my phone, yeah. I'm talking to nine people, thank you very much. <laughs> now, actually, it looks kind of white there, but it's very yellow. But uh, Alexander got more yellow than I did, but she used ling, which I cannot remember what that's called in Norwegian, in English, L-Y-N-G. So she did those, so she's better than I do, she's got more stuff. I made gutter yarn again, yes, Kristen's here. Oh, so by the way, Kristen, this time I got smart and used your pot. Uh, this is gutter yarn. Those two colors for some reason didn't turn out, but it's the same batch, green. But my greens turned out very non-gutter this year. Why does that look so white? If I put my hand next to it, maybe it can get better. Oh, she calls me. My gutter yarn is when I just gut I'm the dandelion gut yarn. So I picked a bunch of dandelion guts and everything, threw them in a pot and boiled them up and didn't tell... <laughs> didn't tell Kristen how to do it. Sorry, Carl just sniffed my ear. <laughs> Why are you sniffing my ear? I'm going for a cigarette. I'll be back. Okay. Don't try and stop him. He wants to quit. Don't try and stop him. We gotta watch him leaving. See? There he goes. <laughs> Ain't he cute? <laughs> I got Greg over there in front of me too. And Robin. <laughs> no, so uh, this time, no, it's just birch leaves. So I thought I'd show you the difference here, but it just for some reason just looks so dark, or light on camera. But there's the yellow and then the green. This is just birch leaves. So I did pick some new ones. Uh, from the 17th of May, we had branches of leaves chucked around everywhere, a bit like that. So I picked up all the leaves off of them when before they were dead. <laughs> But I didn't think I had enough, so I grabbed some more from in the house that I've had hanging in there for two, three years. So now we have to fill it with new plants. Anyway, so this is the copper pot. I could use Kristen's pot, which is much bigger. Yep, that's where I do. When I just chuck it in the pot and I don't measure anything, I don't weigh anything, I don't watch the clock or anything like that. I don't even separate the leaves from the roots. And um, Kristen shakes her head, and I am so happy with my gut dyed color because it's not white. And Kristen just shakes her head. I like to do it. Sometimes I just like to do it to piss her off. It's so fun. <laughs> so this is just birch in a copper pot. You can see how yellow it is still. There's a lot of color left in there. And that's what that made. And there's one that's a hat that's being started. I do dye. I leave the leaves in intentionally so that it goes uneven. Um, but... Uh, I will do some with tansies, uh, but when we finally picked out, took all the tansies in the house, we had filming this week, I'll go into that later. So I got about four Vikings separating the tansy heads uh, from the plant, rest of the plant, and those are gonna be such fine little seeds that I will definitely uh, sift the yarn, or sift the water before sticking the yarn in there. But this is the same birch leaves in an iron pot, and look how green it is. There's a lot of green in there. So that's the same. Same leaves, everything, two different pots. Copper, iron. And I did borrow your pot, uh, Kristen. It's over here. I used it with uh, ammonia. So thank you very much for letting me borrow your pot. I will rinse that out. Right now it's just ammonia and water um, and then the wool. But it's kind of weird though. The first color I put in there, this was stored upside down, so it shouldn't have had anything in it. But the first yarn I um, did, yeah, you told me I could too, so I didn't quite just take the liberty there. Let's see if we don't make you sick here turning around. The first batch that came out of there, uh, for some reason, this is all the colors. These were all white, but the first batch that came out of there all went they kind of this light yellow color, and it's just ammonia and water, so there might have been some dye left in your pot. Uh, but they should have come out like that, the white. But they colored nicely anyway, so this is usually I just use vinegar, but this time I used... Uh, ammonia or um i can show you what that is uh we call it viking urine in a bottle 
in these corona times. Let's see. There we are. Viking urine in a bottle. That's what salmiac means. Or salmi. <laughs> no, it's just ammonia. There you can see in the very bottom. It's an ammoniac solution, 9%. But I must have used a crap load because... Um, I thought I didn't use... How much do you use, Kristen, when you do this? I did a, Usually I would do about one-third ammonia. But that amount of water in there has... That's a pretty big pot, too. So it has about a half, half of one of these in there, and it was so strong I ended up being able to mord into more yarn. No, I didn't use in the dye. I rinsed it first. But it made a very effective color. Okay, Kristen's yelling at me. <laughs> if I made you cry, Kristen, then my dying here is done. <laughs> Tormus says, I hereby declare Albert as the first, first, first of the first. All hail the kings. Torben, did you not get there ahead of him this time? Who was first? I have to, oh. Damn, Charlotte was second. And Oh, you guys logged in early. I made the link at about 5 uh, or 4.30, I think, today and posted it after 5. So... I got a little distracted. I created the link and then I had to go in and take care of the sheep and then uh, then I posted it. Anyway, so that's how much... Uh, oops, see that scroll down here. But that's how much I used. How much ammonia would you use? You with your pH balance tags and stuff. Okay, it looks really huge, but it's not. Okay, see how small the bottle is? <laughs> Kristen doesn't like that I used Viking urine in a bottle. Did you use the real fermented Viking urine, Kristen? And which pee did you collect? Carl? Did Kristen collect your pee? I'm not this. Yeah. No, this is the first time I've ever tried ammonia with birch, but I have a crap load of uh, ammonia. So I thought, let's try that. A crap load of birch, I mean. But uh, Salmiak also contains uh, soaps and other uh, non ammonia thingies. Yeah, it just says uh, ammoniac lursening, 9%, but that was all they had in the store. Bruk doseringstabellen ob land angikt mengde salmi me van. I used a fuckload. Is that bad? <laughs> it says I should use the dosing table. <laughs> she said, I really need you how to do this. No, you can't teach me how to do this properly, Kristen. Then whatever will make me giddy. <laughs> it turned out really nice, though. I, mean, I like the color. Yeah, but you can't repeat it because you have no idea how much you used. Yeah, but I don't want to repeat it. I just want it to be fucked up. <laughs> no, I just like that it's blotchy. <laughs> I like it blotchy. Um, well, that's why I leave the leaves in. Okay, I know. I need to know, Karen. Have you ever used Carl's pee to dye stuff? Not as far as I know, no. <laughs> you have to sleep sometime. Yes, but, <laughs> and I usually pee like a lot while I sleep. <laughs> Which you don't know. <laughs> Carl P. Mayonnaise. Oh, you don't pee mayonnaise, I hope. Mayonnaise. <laughs> no. Anyway, I'm happy with my color, though, Kristen. I thought that was pretty good. Um, I did actually put the yellow in one more time. So if you notice the two middle skeins, these two skeins are slightly darker than the other. But um, the birch leaves are older, so unfortunately it went a little bit browner, too, in color. Torben's laughing, by the way. <laughs> obviously at your expense but i'm very happy with these greens this is normally this is darker than my usual military looking green and then of course it's um uneven so i don't know if you can see it very well in here when it's uneven yeah you can when it's uneven you get those little flecks i like that that says i dyed it and Kristen did not so if you want properly dyed okay anyway but actually let's take a look at uh, alexandra's because she knows what she's doing. Lila was supposed to be here this weekend, but they are under the weather, so they couldn't make it. No, hers looks... Yeah, she also left hers uneven, too. I like that. But these aren't rinsed yet, I don't think. I think they're just drying. But those looked really cool. And she's got hand spun in here, I noticed, too. I really wish the colors were as vibrant on the camera. For some reason, they're not. Might be time to get a new phone. Okay, let's read chat. And then we'll show what else we've been up to today. You, um, what did you do today while I look? What did you do this week? It's been a whole week. I've been guiding them. Inquiring Torbins want to know. You've been guiding people? What kind of people have you been guiding? 
Last group no was Bahrainian German. Oh, we had Bahrainian people here yesterday too. Yeah. Like a bunch, a big group of like eight of them. Uh, let's see. Everybody's got the weather in there. If you want to know what the weather is, take a look. Oh, Garcia was fifth. <gasps> Slacking. No. <laughs> um, oh, she's warping her rigid heddle loom. I still have to try to do that. I haven't actually done that yet. Uh, worked with a heddle loom. I have one from um, Yen Jay's mom gave me one. Uh, her name is Just, J-U-S-T. Um, and R.K. Hegman is, uh, Ron Hegman's uh, knitting slippers for my friend's mom. And uh, knitting a square up warm for, up for America. Oh, cool. I have to check out the Warm Up America thing. A blanket square she's making. I think that's one of those where you each donate a square and then they put it together and they uh, it goes to frozen people, if I understand. Frozen homeless people, I think. Ah, TBC are not first, but she's here and from Arkansas. They're having the same weather we are. Oh, Albert says, remember to like and comment and subscribe. Thank you. I should really push my YouTube. And Heidi Lisa is here. Your brother is not, but uh, the other Heidi is. She came uh, a couple days ago. So we'll have to say hi if we have her around. I noticed she has a new pair of socks. I made uh, Yenny's kid some socks a long time ago, but he's unfortunately grown. Um, and they don't fit Yenny, but they Isn't fit that the good Heidi. Thing? Not when you want the socks to fit, no. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the more they grow, the more work it takes. Look how long it's taken me to make Greg's socks. Greg, are your socks done yet? No, there, I'm at the toes though. I just have to close them up. But the original socks, no, they're not done. Peruta says, I, uh, it was the last week of school here. Uh, now I'm busy packing for my trip to South Africa. We fly on the fifth. Oh, exciting. Oh, I went too far. I misskipped everybody here. I saw Lucas was here, hello. Hey, we got Prata Svenska to Lucas. I'm still trying to convince uh, Carl see he's Swedish. <laughs> That's an insult for Norwegian. I'm so sorry. I like the Swedes, though. Okay. Gutter dying is in my... Yeah, okay. Now we got to keep going. Okay, now they're answering each other. And... See, they like my gutter yarn. Actually, it's not gutter yarn. I didn't put the guts in it, so... I just used the kluak. <laughs> no, I didn't use kluak. I used salmiak. Kluak means sewer. Uh, the leaves color, uh, die fast. It, they are color fast if you use the mordant. Uh, by the way, uh, she asks if the leaves were color fast. If you don't treat your yarn beforehand, it will actually pretty much fade and keep running out. But I do believe they will fade in light. Collect me if I'm wrong. But if you're sitting in the sunlight forever in those colors, I think they will actually fade. Uh, actually, our, our light colors have been handing up pretty well. Our dye samples for four years, we've had those. Let's see. <laughs> I'm still reading through the comments here. Oh, Albert has some white diamond twill wool coming soon, and he wants to dye. Um, okay, so Kristen is envious, and this is good because actually uh, when you're talking about something that valuable, get Kristen to help you color it. Don't let me do it. Ah, a cross and uh, Arlene is here. Hi. Uh, Torben says, I, oh, we already did that, the dear declare. He had some writing to do. Oh, we listened to Torben's podcast on the way to Voss yesterday. Yep. And he was talking about the Chili Klaus beer. Okay, if you remember back in December, we were feeding him. Um, I was feeding uh, Chili Klaus, Chili Claus, I think it is, uh, chocolate drops. Go ahead, tell the story, because you had wind force. No, but uh, <laughs> okay. nine is the correct number, not five, Torben. He had wind force nine, and... Um, well, we literally lit Carl on fire with a chili drop. <laughs> and so uh, Torben got super excited. He sent a, a picture of a bottle of Chili Claus beer. Chili Claus beer didn't know it existed. And he's like, let me nervous finger and everything. So we thought, oh, no. But we didn't actually see him drink it, though. But he said he drank it on um, for his podcast, which is Quarantine, uh, Quarantine Appeals or Quarantine Beer. Um, which, and, he, and he displayed how he really did not like that beer <laughs> yes um, i think he compared it to diaper containments <laughs> no that might have been the other one but no that uh, might have been the other he one he was not impressed by the complete lack of chili in this supposedly very chili strong beer he said it tasted a lot like uh Mangner, what i forgot what that one was <laughs> he compared it to Mangner beating getting beat up by a girl mm. or something i forget it was funny i was driving a car at the time but carl was laughing uh, but anyway, he thought that you were kind of a wimp because you couldn't handle 
Wind Force 5. Well, it was 9, <laughs> not 5. So he called you out, Torben. Uh, what is the best P for coloring? I think I'm going to leave that one up to Kristen. Oh, no, she says PSP, the ammonia you want. How do I spin the yarn? Uh, on a drop spindle. I would love to use a, a spinning wheel, but I don't actually have one. Uh, the drop spindle. Show you two of them here. These are really small ones, so I don't like to use these ones too much, but you can see my green bag there, sorry. On these. These are the ones with weights on the top, uh, but I have a bigger one in wooden that I like more. Those ones I just use on display. Hi, Greg. Hello. It's a Greg. Okay, I'll let you look at the sun while I catch up on chat here. Ah, Albert's doing a warehouse and logistic course. I used to work in a warehouse and uh, had responsibility for the logistics for quite a long time. 250,000 uh, items in the store. You may ask me later. <laughs> uh, very peculiar taste if you like mild chilies. He said, uh, oh yeah, Lucas says, speaking of chili beer, I can recommend chili mead, which is a very peculiar taste if you like mild chilies. I didn't even know chili beer was a thing until the chili close thing. I don't think it is a thing. No? Let's see. Carl loves Swedish. Hey, yeah. Hey, yes, sir. Streaming. Sur streaming. What do you have to say about that, Carl? Uh, the way I understand it, it is uh, some kind of Swedish dish <laughs> that is a direct result of the Swedish lack of understanding on how to conserve food. Is this correct, Lucas? You who are from Sweden? By the way, Carl usually picks on some nation every year. I don't know. Well, what they are doing is that every they are episode. trying to can uh, herring. But they start, uh, they start the fermenting process before they close it up. So the can kind of expands until it looks like a ball, and then it's about ready. <laughs> it's so bad. And then Swedish <laughs> people eat it to prove that they are Swedish. I don't <laughs> think anybody actually likes it. Lucas says it's a very, oh, no, wait, no, that's not the right one, sorry. Uh, Torben said he hadn't been so disappointed since Magner lost a fight against a girl from Fjärland. That was it. <laughs> Yo, Greg, new Star Wars Lego in stores now, says Torben. And Albert says, hi, Greg. Hello. Okay, which, which Lego sets? Because I've been looking for new ones and I can't find any. Greg's looking for new Lego sets. So you got to come up with which one. Okay, I missed a crap ton of chat. I'm so sorry. I'll come back and check it after. But if you noticed... This wool is up for grabs for the uh, Freeman that we're in here this village. This is the one that was cut last year. This is how much we have left of Grotas and Svartan. Um, yes, Lego, says Kristen. Okay, and by the way, Lucas says, Sir, strumming is an uh, Eastern Swedish thing. It's pure silliness. Here on the West Coast, we pickle herring like the Norwegians do. Are you okay with that? Is that, is that acceptable to you, Carl? But I approve. He approves, okay. So... We, I have to pick, we had, um, yep, so that wool, the reason I could donate it to them, I didn't actually finish it, because we have two new ones. These ones haven't even stretched out yet. Somebody's got a haircut today. So there is Grotas for one year growth, and this is Farton, actually just under one year, so. That's a lot of wool, yeah, and that is heavy. There's a couple of sweaters in there easily. So... Here they are. One of them got a little nicked, by the way, but he's fine. They've got two layers of skin. Ta-da! <laughs> Big fluffy cheek. They're not so happy right now. <laughs> no, actually, they're very much happy. They're kind of feeling a lot lighter, but probably a little itchy. So these guys got a haircut today. Do you want to grab the bag of treats? Greg, that's on the table there. See if they'll come up and say hi. They've been sniffing each other, too, because apparently there's all kinds of new smells underneath that. They look so naked, I know. But they're much happier and lighter. Here they go. So now people think they're goats. Yep, so now we have to wash all the wool. It was actually, it's actually probably still warm. You want to feed them on the creepy street here? Oh, we can feed. I can feed them if you want. Come here. Come here. You want to... So they left a little bit of curl on the top of his head. And this one, he's got a little <laughs> wart, it looks like. Actually, that'll just pull right off if you're the, 
if you want to pull those left to pieces. Yeah, everybody thought they were goats when they looked like this, but they're not. Did you lose your man chops? Look, Greg's got more treats. Oh, Grotas is going to totally eat that, Greg. He knows where you put that. You can give him some. I just wanted to get a better photo. Very happy sheep. sheep. They're, they're five years old now, we figured out. I think, wasn't it March 2018 we got them? And they were about a year? Sounds about right. Sounds about right, so yeah. Uh, ooh, I'm going to read you some chat here. Um, the Aero Sprite and some Inquisitor ship and a bunch of dioramas. I saw the Inquisitor ship. I really want to get that one. He saw the Inquisitor ship. He really wants to get that one, if you couldn't hear. Dioramas, I don't really care too much about. That's Doesn't right. really care about the dioramas. Okay, you can keep those. Uh, and the Mandalorian's Nabu Star Fighter. Yes, that one I want. Okay, that one he wants. So you'll have to get those first, uh, Torben. <laughs> okay, so what did you guys do this week? What did you do this week, Greg? Work. Yeah? <laughs> That's about it. What was the um, main background where, where people came from for you? What did you have them more? Where did you have them from first? Which countries were represented this week? A lot of Americans yeah. earlier in the week. There were a lot of Americans more, earlier on. Uh, Eastern Europe in the latter mm. part of the week, generally speaking. Yeah? I would say so. Then we had, didn't we have Ukrainian this week too? Probably. I think there was a bunch Probably. yesterday. There was a couple today. Uh, a lot of French. Yeah. Uh, well, hello. Hey! Else to join on the Look at the naked sheep. It's what Runa. What have you done to the sheep? Oh my God. You're the one who ordered it. Yeah, no. <laughs> They're just, they're looking a little naked. <laughs> what was the dumbest question an American asked? Okay, so America's going under the bus this week. What was the dumbest question an American asked you, Greg, first? I'm not sure that I've had a particularly dumb question this no, week. No, they've been pretty good. Runa, have you had any dumb questions from Americans this week? Uh, not Americans. Not Americans? Okay, who do you want to throw under the bus? I'll turn no, the camera. I don't know the language, the uh, nationality. But they thought that we were hiding away from the government. In this oh, country. I did actually have one person ask me about that too, yeah. By the way, your sister's on. <laughs> okay, Greg, or Carl, did you have any interesting questions? I don't uh, remember having any dumb ones. No, they've all been pretty good. I just had one that wanted to know where we got our food from and stuff, but that's probably the same one you talked to then, Rune, I think. I don't think they were American, though. I had a Dutch guy asking, yeah, and it's... Why well, does the waterfall turn off? It's not a super good question, but at mm. least it's one I've never heard before. Yeah? Uh, he asked, uh, what did I do with the trails in case of war? That's actually not a bad question. Uh, no, it, it's not super good either. Uh, the reason he was confused is because uh, he has been reading up on some uh, uh, northern Indian people which basically had the system where the, everybody's trails belongs to the chieftain in case of war because oh. he would then arm them and have his private army. Mm. Uh, I am, we can't say for sure. The Vikings could have done something similar. I doubt it, but it is, uh, it's in with, within the scope of realism because um, what we know about uh, the Viking Age is mostly from Icelandic sources and they are Die hard Republicans. They will. They live under a thing, and I will never have a king that can basically come and say, "Hey, all your trails belong to me now." <laughs> that would never work on Iceland, but it might have worked in Norway with strong kings. Yeah. I just doubt that uh, somebody would think it was a good idea to just arm and train a bunch of trolls and then go, "Okay, crisis over. Can I please have my weapons back?" <laughs> no, you can go back to your master. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> I don't think that would really work. Uh, so to turn the question around, actually there was one that Albert wrote. Uh, he said, uh, oh God, there's some fun ones in here too, actually. Uh, Albert said, is that fire real? Yeah, actually I think Virginia got that question once. Ooh, Rhonda's gonna make choke cherry jelly. Uh, yum, yum, yum. She's gonna make room in the freezer and when we get a good proc, ooh. She's gonna hoard them like gold, dragon's gold. I agree with her. 
Kristen said, no, you're fine. Yeah, no, it's okay. Because I'm going to show over here too, because Kristen said one of the questions she got a lot was, what time do they turn the waterfalls off? I actually never got that question until this week, and it wasn't quite worded like that. Let's see if I turn this around. So Adrian Spendlow says he got that question, what time do they turn the waterfalls off? But actually, I didn't get that question per se. I got the other way around. I said, do they ever stop? Do they ever, you know, I mean, what do they run all year round or do they only just flow at this time of year? So I maybe that's what they meant. Kind of stop and I kind of stop completely. It's just a matter of how cold it is. Yep. If, well, if they freeze enough, yeah. But we do have, I mean, like up there in the middle, uh, I don't know if you can see it right in the middle there. There's, when it's heavy rain, there's probably about five or six waterfalls up there. But right now there's only two, one, I think, in the middle there at the top. So maybe. Also, the question of when that turned the waterfalls off, considering how much uh, uh, hydroelectric plants we have here in Norway, yeah. there are some waterfalls that are actually being turned off and on. Oh, yeah. So, not to. <laughs> not to guard it. Not, He's stepping on the hose. Not to defend them too much, but that's not necessarily a stupid question in all contexts. <laughs> okay, so. Runa is putting water in a bucket with a fire hose. Okay. And Greg is stepping on it. <laughs> That's why I got out of the way. <laughs> no, I thought that was pretty good. You can beat up Greg for my viewing purposes. Okay, uh, he also, uh, let's see. And Albert says, yeah, he's not joking. His dad was asked that in the 70s uh, when, uh, and he was asked that when he went hiking to Prekestulen. Ah. When does the bus leave? When does the bus for Svalbard leave? <laughs> <laughs> Have you actually had that question? <laughs> I've never known. No. no. We had a lot of buses here yesterday, actually. Um, all your bases are belong to us. All your bases are belong to me. I remember that. The question he, uh, Lucas, gets all the time is, is it a real beard or, or are those extensions? <laughs> Oops, sorry, I turned it around. Is that a real beard, Carl, or is that extensions? But I've never had that question. No, it's pretty stuck on there. I'm sorry, my bed looks uh, so realistic that nobody even... Oh. Is this a real beard or is that extensions? No, that's pretty on there. Stuff. Is this a real beard or is that extensions? I'd say that's fluff that doesn't even exist. Almost. Well, it's on there though, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only person who should be really insulted by that question is you, Karo. That's right, it's real. It's not coming off either though. <laughs> Bite me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, it did look like Runa was peeing. Actually, anytime we have to use the hose over there, there's a Viking standing there and the doors open up this way so the people can't uh, uh, see what's going on in there. And it always looks like someone is peeing in a bucket because the hose is, you know, held at just right level here. <laughs> and it's kind of funny too when the stream starts slowing down and then, <laughs> and then Roger was doing it one day and it was splashing everywhere. <laughs> so it looked really bad. Uh, so now we made to, oh, uh, Runa's, or, um, Runa's making more room in the freezer so that she has uh, to take out the frozen juice and cook it up. Oh, you're going to have such fun stuff. Don't the sheep get cold? Says Ann Decker. Hi, by the way, Ann. Hey, Stu. No, it's actually pretty warm out right now, but why aren't these sheep cold, Runa? Uh, well, they can feel a bit cold the first days because they're not using, uh, used to get their all, all the clothes off, but they get used to it, so... They've been sniffing they each other. Like the inner coat is still there, so it's. Yeah, the inner coat is still on. Yeah, yeah they're well, not completely naked. Parts of it. Yeah, some of it was pretty close shave. <laughs> They've been sniffing each other ever since that wool came off. They yeah. have must have a new smell underneath. Yeah. But I didn't even think about it. But a tourist goes to touch the wool, and this is like 15, 20 minutes after it was sheared, and she says, "Oh, you can still feel the heat yeah. from the sheep in there." So it must have been yeah, pretty warm. They are warm. They are warm-blooded animals. So. Albert says, tell Greg, uh, soon I will look more rich with my diamond twill and one of the cloaks, cloaks clothes will be reddish. What do you have to say about that? That's fine. It's the silk that I have a problem with. Then you're a I'm an wearing outlaw. silk. My dragon yeah, is you're not silk. wearing a silk tunic. He was. No, no, this is just a couple of threads. And then my eyeballs are silk. There. But this is the raw silk. That's the shiny silk. Uh, it's good to see, I miss her Zooms, but we've been, now we're open on Sunday, so I can't see Zoom anymore. 
Here, we'll keep looking at sheep while I read chat. They're fun. I they imagine they have chicks. Oh, did you get the chicks? Yeah, we have a couple. Ah, uh, are they times. hiding out or they, should we go see no, them? No, they are hiding now, yeah. I didn't know we got chicks. How many did you get though? Because no, they were sitting we, on a uh, horde of eggs. Have, we don't really know how many they are. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, is it that many? No, no, no. Uh, the, lay, the hens are still laying on the eggs, so. Yeah. Maybe we get, I don't know. At least we had uh, two. Now we have at least one. Yeah. Or maybe two or three, I don't know. Well, not all the chicks survive either, so it's always no. good with extra chicks. Yeah. Sometimes they just can't eat properly and choke. I noticed that happened with one not long ago. Okay, but I had a... Huh? I'm going to hide how you say The yeah. sheep are telling others. No, you can't. I have to ask you one question, Greg. I have uh, both hmm? I have to ask you one question. Oh. What was the best question you had all week? Same question's going to you guys too, so you better start thinking while he has a brain fart over here. Uh, Best question you've had all week. Like, um, not entertainingly stupid, but actually a really good question. Oh, I've got him thinking. I don't remember any questions. Um, so when do you make forticoles, says Torben, <laughs> which is a sheep. Uh, no, we're not doing that one yet. Uh, and Pruda says the chicken porn has paid off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. I would say that Possibly, someone asked something about the ships, and I can't remember what the hell it was now, but it was something that was quite a logical question to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Something to do with the speed of them, I think it was. Ooh, uh, yeah, the, yeah? Mm. Okay, if you think of it. I'll try, keep trying to remember. Okay, same question. I don't question. remember any questions, oh, you... <laughs> except the uh, one that we are hiding away from the government. The hiding away from the government is good, though. Yeah. When the heli we had a helicopter come in this week, too, with a uh, VIP. Yeah. Uh, and it reminded me of when we all kind of sat on the other side of this. We just looked through the door of one of the fences and said, okay, we can see the helicopter on the other side of the river. If we just, um, if we just swim over the moat, we can get to the helicopters and beg them to drag us to safety. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I must say, every question about the Viking series is stupid questions. Okay, <laughs> Viking series questions. Do you get a lot of those? Yeah. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Carl just winced. What's your favorite uh, Viking uh, series question? My favorite, and that is because of it's so stupid in context, is because when I'm at the boat, I tell the Rollo story. And yeah. I also tell, we are not certain who Rollo is. And when people after that ask me if Rollo was Ragnar's brother, then yeah. I want to slap them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what's your best question you've had all week? I would say that the Dutch trail question, not... I thought it was actually a pretty good question. I think it is pretty good because it's unique. I've yeah. been doing this for so long that uh, new questions is not something I come across every no. week. It's no. usually the same over and over again. Yeah. Uh, and it mostly has to do with brothers. Uh, Loki is Thor's brother, right? Uh, Rollo is Ragnar's brother, right? Uh, Harald Feinherr and Halton the Black are brothers, right? <laughs> no, no, and no, not everybody is brothers. You can talk to people, you are not your brother. That's actually physically possible. <laughs> For fuck's sake, you moron. <laughs> if you pay extra, Carl can be your guide. <laughs> How much extra do you charge for calling people morons, you idiot? <laughs> I have never called a tourist a moron. Oh, good, I hope not. Jeez. I <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Adrian's here, by the way. He says he never got any... Man, I never got any dumb questions. Uh, Albert said the look I got was telling us. He said his uh, best question was, wait, Frey and Frey are siblings and married? How is that possible? Actually, I've heard because this one before. He has a penis and she has a vagina. It's possible. But you can marry your siblings? Well, you shouldn't. Gods seem to happen all the time. And the gods yeah. did, yeah? Unless you are either a god or Egyptian, you shouldn't. No. Okay. But you could, but you shouldn't. I thought it was just because it was a translation. Some showed them as siblings, some showed them as... Uh... No. No? Nah, probably no. not. They might also have been one god at one point. Okay. Who had... Uh, a hermaphrodite god. Yeah. Okay. It almost seems also to be plausible that the Vanir gods didn't have a uh, prohibition against that sort of thing, unlike the Aesir gods, because in some of the versions of the myths that I've read, 
if uh, when Frey and Freya came over to the Aesir gods as hostages, yeah, that's when they were told that they couldn't be coupled anymore. Mm. Mm. And also there is uh, some vague references that Njord's wife was also his sister. So we've got incest on double uh, yeah. double levels mm. here. Kind of depending on, but <laughs> Njord might also have been a woman at some point. Yeah, you've mm. also got that as well. So, so it's kind of uh, like... Nargtus or whatever. Mm. Uh, it's yeah. this is what you get when you don't have a pope and you don't have any kind of orthodoxy. Yeah. You can just make up whatever kind of shit you like and uh, <laughs> then just run with it. But isn't that this uh, Nartus uh, thing is it be before, long before the Viking Age? Like well, it's before the Viking Age, but there isn't really a. Hey, we've just raided the monastery at Lindisfarne. Now we put the penis on Nartus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there is like a switch no, like no, that. No, no, Can no, we no. try that one yeah. day just to see what Carl does? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> to, to scream out in the middle of the village that, oh, <laughs> that you have to put the penis on Nartus. the opposite way around, so cut off the, uh, yeah. 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 We could try that too. So it's like, <laughs> It, it, it doesn't bother anyone here except possibly you and him. Yeah, that's true. No, 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 you can't. Thinks in terms of absolute. This is migration era. In the migration era, people did this and believed that. Mm. Then you're the Viking era and all of these changes. Mm. So I kind of imagine these Vikings are coming back from Lindisfarne. As soon as they come in, they come into land, they immediately start to remove all the vowels from mm. their uh, runic alphabet. <laughs> then they go, okay, these are now two gods. Take this dirty hermaphrodite and hide him somewhere and give me a man and a woman. <laughs> and their mother should be a man now. No more questions. Moving right along. <laughs> and by the way, we should start riding Ireland and England and Scotland on a very regular basis. Yeah. At least once every summer would be good. <laughs> and no more horns on the helmets, you morons. <laughs> Uh, so as Torben quite right says, and the tourists outside the hotel in Gudvangen just heard that. <laughs> uh, he's just, he was, uh, oh, I think I have to go back a little bit. Um, the Hasburger way, <laughs> like the Hapsburger, sorry, I said that wrong. Uh, Hector asks, uh, how much does Carl charge to start every sentence with, for fuck's sake? <laughs> How much would you charge for that kind of tour? That could be a good one. It would take you about 15 minutes longer. <laughs> yes. And many of it, uh, for a lot of it, it wouldn't make any sense. No? Okay, what's the best uh, place you could insert a for fuck's sake in your tour? No, but that's the point, because not every point I'm making is something you have to nail home with a hammer. <laughs> yeah. So if I, for instance, go, uh, what I do at the boat, for fuck's sake, this is the psychic secret behind the success of the Vikings. <laughs> For fuck's sake, it's fast and extremely seaworthy. For fuck's sake, this is just a little one. It's a Viking boat, not a Viking ship. For fuck's sake, it's clinker clinker built. It would be very annoying very quickly. Yeah. No, I think it's kind of pretty good, actually. I'd pay to go on that tour. <laughs> Let's see. Greg, I was going to have you try on a sock before you left here. You got a chance? Okay. Let's see. We'll turn around and see his sock. Are you off too, Rena? Uh, yeah. Or we'll find you again soon? Huh? We'll find you again soon otherwise? Uh, maybe. So this is the really green socks, but I have to have his feet because I'm on the toes now. I have to figure out which one's longer. They're only about a couple of centimeters more than they were last week. Let's see, which one looks slightly longer? Well, crap if I know, they both look about the same. Okay, try it on. I imagine we got just a little bit more to go. Oh, these are the things I got to put the silk on. I got these at Sirstenagrana. That's uh, to wrap the silk around because right now the silk keeps falling off. You like the color too? Everybody likes the color of the socks. I think they're kind of fun anyway. They're a lot. They're really, really fun. But the, you know, they're thin in some points and thicker in others because it's made with all of this um, embroidery wool. But you will not have any moths because it says moth resistant on every single package of those. Oh, there we go. There's the foot. So I can pretty much close you up now because it'll stretch a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're gonna have socks next time. Yay! Yay! Thank you. Ah. 
they will rip real soon i promise though so you're gonna have to find a way to to keep it because like i said it's a i used finish two plus two but i almost I should have used to three plus teflon, two uh, no there's no it? teflon there but you can see my finger like through there so i'm a little worried about it yes show scrum socks oops i turned it let me see there you go. why is your scrum socks looking golden because it's made out of gold i don't believe you <laughs> and i have a handle ready for it oh that's gonna be cool are you gonna leave all the extra appendages yeah yeah this is the... <laughs> Sorry. where are you gonna cut it off at how long are you gonna have your handle like this maybe i'll see how much i need well, that'll be quite cool. Yeah. This is very good to so what is that you're holding, just in case it's not too obvious it's on video? Deer antler. Is it a deer antler? Yeah. Ah. It was sitting like this. So who shot the deer? Uh, some farmer in Moss. And he gave it to you? Yeah. It was quite nice. I'll see you all tomorrow. This yeah, like this. Uh, Bye, Greg. Bye for now. <laughs> see you soon. You warm our feet next week. Yeah. For about three days, and then they'll be burnt through again. Sorry, show me again that, Runa. Yeah. Is that Anders made that? Yeah. Wow. That'll be quite cool. So the bronze won't stay on there very long, though, won't it? It's just bronze brushed? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, as long as he doesn't uh, sharpen it wrong, it should stay on for quite a while. Yeah. Oh, really? The edge will not have it. But just the very, uh, very, yeah. Mm. It's nice and sharp, the too, right now. The edge is just the... Uh, tiny little bit yeah um, and it's a scram sex blade by the way because of the shape of the blade mm. and the length okay you got some questions i think we'll put that on there for a minute i maybe have to cut off some of <laughs> carl says our torben says i'll pay carl for doing that 50 kroner sentence starting with fuck fuck's sake <laughs> 50 kroner per sentence is it 50 kroner per sentence? That's going to be pretty good. Or That's, just 50 kroner uh, just for starting every sentence. 50 uh, kroner tour might be a little cheap. I uh, remember one stupid American question. Oh, oh, good, good. I we need questions. Uh, think about it, stupid. Don't they I? want to know what not to ask when they come. Yeah. Are we allowed to take uh, tips? <gasps> yeah. Did you get a tip today? No, not today, but we are allowed to take tips. We're allowed to take tips. <laughs> yep. Actually, tipping the guide is quite common. Although, uh, for those of you who are reading your... Um, Travel books to Norway, tipping is generally included, included in the price. What they generally that say is <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that uh, uh, tipping in Norway is not expected, but it is appreciated. Yeah. Yes, that's another better way of saying it, yeah. Oh, I had uh, somebody at the cash register uh, asking, uh, uh, because there was some change left over, and they said, oh, but don't you have a tip jar for that? And I said, no, no, we don't really do tips. Don't you do tips here? And I said, well, maybe the guides... <gasps> Our guide was awesome. Here's 50 kroner. Go give it to him. <laughs> so Roger got a 50 kroner tip. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, if you want to tip him to say, oh, for fuck's sake. Does he have to say it that loud during opening hours? Though? That would be kind of fun. Yeah, no, I can't do it during opening hours, no matter no. how much you pay me. No. Oh, no, Peruta's smug, sock smuggler fell through. Uh, she'll find a different way to get them out of the country, though. Okay, well, those will keep him, him warm for about... He's buying armored a socks week. from the Russians. He's oh, wow. buying, yeah, armored socks from the Russians. Armored. Armored. Yeah, have to Technically, it's a South African uh, Russian, though. Yeah, because the South Africans have never been involved in international arms trade in any way. <laughs> Are you happy with that, Peruta? Or would you like to, you know, slap him? <laughs> uh... Was that sarcastic? Carl takes, <laughs> <laughs> Carl takes his tip from in the form of iced coffee. You're not wrong. It's amazing what I can get that guy to do if I just buy him a couple of iced coffees. <laughs> Advanced Viking prostitution. Advanced that. Viking prostitution. Uh, what do you take other than uh, tips? What's your weakness? Coffee? Cash. Cash. Cash is king. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't expect any tips. So if I get tips, I'm happy. Yeah, and we are not fishing whatever. for it. No. I accidentally No, fished, nobody's fishing for it. That's not actually bad, bad form. I accidentally got two bottles of Hungarian beer because I had the conversation with Hungarians that led down into the... Yeah, how did you do that, by the way? Well, we have our own time Hungarian, uh, mm -hmm. Juliana, who works for us. Yeah. And they were commenting on... Uh, how easy it is to find Hungarians when you are walking around in Europe because Hungarians scream at each other a lot. Mm. Okay. And I say, yeah, Norwegians do too, but not when they're sober. 
because alcohol in Norway is so expensive that you, when you drink, you drink for real. Mm. Yeah. So when you're looking for drunk Norwegians, they are very easy to find. You can stand quietly in the center of any European city and you will just hear the, oh, hello, Dusha! The drunken Norwegians everywhere. <laughs> and they go, oh, you like cheap beer. Mm-hmm. And I go, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I got to, German bears. So you had one, and Runa had one. What did you think about the beer? And do you remember the name? I uh, oh. It was a white can with gold. Yeah, lighting. it looked like the. Uh, it looked like the Norwegian cider thing, Grevens. Yeah, it uh, did, but and it was. the name also looked a little bit like mm. that, Grevenstein or something. Yeah, yeah. It but was it very was good. beer. Yeah, you said you liked uh, it too. Stronger yeah. than yeah. normal for Norwegian, mm. uh, but uh, it was very good. Yeah. Did you get to read any um, Scholar, Egil Scholar Grimson? No. This I, week, you've been too busy? I've been busy and I've also... Oh. I You're kind leaving of, me? Uh, Bye, uh, Runa. Come down. Oh, yeah, there's people hiding back there, too. <laughs> we got some uh, Freeman here, too. Wrong. Sorry, go ahead. See you. Thank you, Runa. Now, when I've had the time off lately, I've been on sci- uh, science fiction kick because I'm trying Warsteiner to... Warsteiner beer compensate my uh, uh, if I'm listening to science fiction when I'm off and I'm dealing with Viking Edge when I'm on I'll be on pretty much our time on average The Ballad of the Russian Sock Smuggler, I think I have to write that song Yes you do Torben, I expect to hear it on your next podcast or one that includes maybe some beer too Warst- Warsteiner beer, could it be that one? I don't no, think it that was, was the uh, Oops, sorry. I believe it was Grevenstein it looked like Gravenstein or something. It looked like the count anyway. Count something, which is what Grave means. Mm. Yep. Okay. Uh, so then I have what? There was a big thing that we did this week, uh, apparently. Okay. So we were talking a couple of weeks ago that we were going to have the French um, TV station or TV channel, whatever, TV5 Monde or Monde. I don't know how you'd say that. I'm probably brutally killing it. And our local French girl, Marie, was like super excited because there's a big guy coming there. We don't know who he is. So um, they were here this week. They did their filming documentary and everything. And um, the French that were here who spotted him went crazy. Nobody else. Did you even know who the guy was? No. I still never saw who it was. Anyway, so they filmed a documentary here on. Uh, you probably have to watch French television. To watch French television. Idea about it. Um, but there were French tourists that just came in the morning for a regular tour and spent the whole day just going, oh, we got a picture of him, we got a picture of him. And then there was the VIP here with their helicopter tour, and they were so convinced that the guy was up in the helicopter too, but no, that wasn't the same. But they were super excited anyway. So some guy was here, he was really famous, we have no idea who he was. Uh, and what did you have to do? Because um, somebody wanted to know if I was going to be jealous because uh, you, had, I had, uh, you were walking around with two women. They stuck two women to you like glue, and you decide that you needed to have this with you uh, on every guided tour from now on? No, I, I, I <laughs> just wanted to kind of have us walking around in the background normally. So obviously everything but normally. So when I'm walking up to the flag, I'm walking with a girl on each side. <laughs> I tried to get Toril to do this as a thing so that we can, I can basically have an entourage <laughs> every time I walk up to the entourage, flag. Entourage, yeah. But uh, I don't think Toril is going for that. It was Maurice's, are you going to just let them give women to our men? <laughs> She's quite funny. Because Roger also, had, her husband also had uh, two, mm. two women dangling off of his shoulders. No, Roger only had both. Did they make you do anything fun and stupid? No. no. I was just in the background talking to my entourage. Mm. Entourage, yeah. We were just, um, well, it's too far in the house to dig it out now, though. But I will turn this way. I just... Um, basically sat over on a bench over there and um, picked the tansy heads off and separated the leaves too. Kristen, okay, question. Uh, so I didn't know what to do with these tansies. I've never tried to color with them before. It's called um, Reinfalm in Norwegian, I think. No, maybe that's not it. What is tansies? The little yellow buttons. It's a weed. It smells pretty interesting. Leviton? No, it's not Leviton. They're the little, little button tops anyway. Um, I think it's called, well, they're tansies in English. I thought it was Reinfalm. Yes, it is Reinfant. I was correct. Okay, so we separated the heads. I didn't know how to do this. So we took away all, all the button flowers and put them in one uh, pot anyway and just kind of grind it up with a mortar and pestle because it looked really cool on TV. Um, but we took the leaves and separated those two. So can you throw the leaves in with the flower buds or do you do each one separately? 
inquiring minds want to know. And then I have the stocks. I don't know idea what the hell I'm going to do with the stocks too. So I separated them all quite meticulously for three hours while they were filming us. A bunch of women standing over a bunch of dead plants. Would do them separately. There you go. Okay, so when you get here, I have a crap load of them. We literally emptied them all out of my house. There must have been like seven or eight bushels. But don't you just take a handful of weeds, some salmiak, and throw in the wood? That's how I do it, but Kristen doesn't agree with me. Yes. She says that makes my gutter yarn. But I don't understand why you ask when you anyway will just pick anything that they is maybe a plant like and throw it in the pot. Yeah. You're picking a fight with Krista now. Okay, now she says cool dry. Oh God, Carl, don't kill me. <laughs> I don't understand why you think I'm picking a fight with Kristen. Uh... Yeah, because she knows I don't give a rat's ass. I just dump it in the pot and boil it and go, ooh, it's not white anymore. <laughs> she's she's my... like going, no, we're going to need like two more degrees and a little bit more pH and um, five seconds more. This is not a sentence I'm using often, but uh, I'm kind of with Kristen on this one because <laughs> I'm... My background is uh, laboratory work from chemistry. And the idea of just doing something, hope it works and not make any notes, uh, kind of rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> you just rubbed Kristen the right way. Look at her. <laughs> I think she just um, text gasmed mm -hmm. there. <laughs> we got uh, eight more minutes. Do you have any stories, Carl? Yeah, no, they, uh, they were all dry, by the way, the plants. They were the ones that were sitting. I think the newest batch was last year, but some of them were three years old. If anybody wants to try to beat the uh, tourists this week by coming up with a better question than the thrill in warfare mm -hmm. question, I can try to answer that. Okay, hit Carl with your best shot. Try to find, I mean, we're actually trying to find a really stupid question for the Viking Age. And uh, we've already decided it can't include the Vikings TV series. No? Ah, that was uh, Charlotte. She says Karen does too. Albert says he needs to pick a plant near him that makes orange color. He keeps forgetting to do so. You have a plant near you that makes orange. I would have thought that'd be, is it corrupt? Matter? Because if you heat it too long, apparently that goes orange. Technical dyeing. Yeah. Okay, I could probably, well, there's a reason I haven't used any of the woad or the matter that I have. Uh, because that would require technical accuracy. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be sitting there with gutter brown. There you go. We're all Vikings, kings, and queens. I thought that was a pretty good, stupid question. We're all Vikings, kings, and queens. Go ahead, Carl. Yes. Do you want to start Vikings, with for fuck's sake? Except for the ones who weren't, were kings and queens. Yes. Okay. So there you go, Chris. And you were a queen. <laughs> kind of, if you use the most narrow definition of Viking, mm. uh, only I would say two of the kings of Norway in the Viking Age mm -hmm. were actual Vikings. Mm. The rest are just kings. Yeah. They're not Vikings. By the way, I see something over there. Alexander, are you needle binding? Yes. Can we see? Ah, I have to go see. We'll come over to you. It's, it's actually Viking and needle binding, but I can't needle bind and hold a cam camera at the same time. We like your yarn, by the way. So Alexander is Norwegian. Yes. Look what she's making. And you German too? Are you German? Oh, you are German. Okay. Yes. I just hear you speak Norwegian just like I do. Yes. Ah, so you, oh, look at that too. You've got wrist warmers too. You have to show us. It might be hard to hear you from the front, but those are cool. Look at the colors. And they're long. Which stitch did you use? Um, this is Mommen stitch. Mommen, yeah? Yeah. That one's a good one. Are you doing Mommen on the other ones too? I like Mommen yes, as well I for thickness. Mommen. And is that also going to be a wrist warmer? Yeah. Is it for. Maybe. Maybe, I'm not yeah. Sure. <laughs> I can put it up. We can see your face there. There you go. You're on the very tail end of my YouTube, minute 52, if you want to see later. See, there's needle binding on it, too. It's not just Viking. <laughs> no, I have to. I still have to finish a hat. Well, the, the yellow one I just started as a hat to see how the yarn turned out, and I kind of like it, but now I have to do the green, too. She's knitting coffee cups, says Torben. Is that what you're making? A, co a coffee cup? No, um, mittens, maybe. Mittens. <laughs> oh, you start at the bottom too then, because yes. then you can decide. That's what I like to do. Oh, Charlotte has got a good stupid question for you, Carl. We're coming up with stupid questions for Carl, if you have any. Let's see. Did the Vikings drink Coke? <laughs> I'm assuming she's just talking about Coca-Cola, but hey. 
I didn't. I, why am I? <laughs> why am I wasting time on this? Because we like to watch you throw a tantrum and say, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" Loud enough for yeah, the tourists over at the hotel to hear you. I know <laughs> that these people know better. No, 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 no. We're all we. We don't know anything. Ah, did Vikings wear pantyhose, Carl? You know, um, the medieval has a version of it. Uh, yes, what you call hoser in medieval contexts are kind of pantyhose-like-ish. Yeah. The Vikings don't seem to have used that, but textiles is such a slippery subject because there are so much we don't find. Mm. That, well, uh, just to take an example, look at the last 273 years. How much have fashion changed in this period? Yeah. We kind of treat the 273 years that comprise the Viking Age as if it's just one fashion monolith where everybody wore the same for all the time. Yeah. So basically, okay, we have raided the monastery at Lindelfarn, so now we dress like this. <laughs> and then Harald Harada dies at Stamford Bridge 273 years later. Where are the hoses? We have to go medieval now. <laughs> um, this is not really how it most likely worked. I know somebody, so, uh, oh sorry, go ahead. With the lack of finds we have, the Vikings might, in this period, so let's say, I'm pulling numbers out of my butt hair, but let's say six times they got the idea into their head that the 60s uh, slang books are, is something we really need. So they have these balloonish uh, legs on their pants. The that kind of could very well have happened and we would have no archaeological evidence of it. There you go, Kristen, time to make some uh, Viking bell bottoms. Uh, Might be the Turkish baggy pants were something that was just used by one guy once. Yeah. But people like them, and we have one find that kind of collaborates them. So. So he'd be a trendsetting Viking. Well, yeah. Yeah. I did actually know there's one guy, Eric, I think his name is. He's been needlewinding forever. A uh, young kid, I think he's American. Uh, he actually made, made a null bound a pair of pants with feet on them. So technically, that could be nylons. More like tights, though, but... Yeah, it's actually made a couple pairs of those. There are obviously no finds of anything that even remotely looks like that, but that isn't to say that it didn't exist. But we kind of have to operate with what we actually have evidence for, which makes us... <gasps> have you tried ferment... This is Kiwi writes, uh, by the way, hi, Kiwi. Have you tried fermentation, plant dying before? And then Kristen writes, of course, uh, it, she has done it. Uh, it can be really cool, too. I've... Um, I've uh, tried to uh, ferment lichen, and I did ferment it quite nicely, but I didn't. I, that was the one that Lila planted with, with that made the really cool blue. Yeah. That was quite cool, yeah. Uh, but I didn't die with it. I uh, didn't have the time, so it sat there for, well, basically it was only supposed to ferment for like three months, but it fermented for like three years. So, <laughs> but it made a really cool color, but you can't put it out in the sun or it'll, it'll die. It'll lose the color pretty quickly. But with the lichens, at least, um, you don't have to use any mordant because it's already got a lot of tannins in it. Um, there was another question for you. Were the, were the Vikings vegans and did they have gluten-free mead? <laughs> this is from Torben. <laughs> I think he's going to use this on his podcast, so it might want to be accurate here. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem that uh, veganism was a thing in the Viking Age. It is possible that some people were, what should you call them, involuntary vegans. Uh, it is possible that some people would have no access to meat because you don't throw away good food on trails. Uh, but I consider it unlikely. And you also have like uh, special occasions like the midwinter bloat where you probably want to share the wealth with everybody. Uh, not because you feel uh, nice, but because that is the way you uh, honor the gods. There is a theory that I also don't believe that uh, Roman gladiators were basically forcible vegans because you want them to be strong but kind of chubby. You want them to bleed, you don't want them to die. Good, because that goes uh, into another question, but go ahead. I consider this to be unlikely because uh, a chubby gladiator would fight with a, with a disadvantage against a skinny gladiator. Yes, you, the skinny gladiator would be more uh, hurt by a sword blow but he would also be in a much better position to deliver sword blows than the chubby, out-of-breath gladiator who is... <laughs> that, I, I would be the chubby, out-of-breath gladiator. 
uh, vegan Viking would die faster, you could say. Uh, then you could say attack. I like that. Okay, so here's uh, Charlotte has got a really cute question too. Um, did all Vikings have to die? And then Kristen follows up with, can you die twice? <laughs> yes. You, you can wanna... double die, so you got purple. How many times have she... <laughs> we like that joke though. The Viking village is one place where you can die twice. When you double dye your colors, yeah, you dye once red and then once blue on top of that. Actually, one of the colors I did not hear though, but uh, is double dyeing. I did the yellow and the first I dyed it yellow, then I dyed it green and I get acid green. It's um, dealing with tourists is kind of like dealing with children. Uh, if you work as a teacher and a kid says the most mind-numbingly stupid thing you can imagine, you don't go, Oh God, that's bad, Torben. <laughs> Shut up, Frank. You're a moron. You go, oh, Frank, um, yes, those are words. And I'm glad to see you are using your words. But the way you are using them is not entirely correct. You do something like that. <laughs> Every time a tourist asks you something that is mind-numbingly stupid, you go, eh, yes, but not entirely. Haha, <laughs> I see what you're saying, but no. <laughs> uh, milk and cheese were a huge part of their diet. Vegetarian was not a thing, yeah. Uh, vegan Vikings were called hungry. <laughs> <laughs> this is Torben, that's so bad. Look at that, even Alexandra looks like she's going to puke over there at your dad jokes. <laughs> No, but anyway, we're at 61 minutes. We should probably get going. So we'll wave goodbye to you, Alexandra, too, since it's on you for a second. <laughs> then we'll see you next week, Saturday at uh, 6 o'clock again. Should be good. We don't have any double bookings for that. Mm. And then maybe I'll be even faster at posting so we can see who's uh, first, second, third, and whatever. Have a good week. We're leaving you. We're going to go eat now because it smells like bacon over there, and it's killing me. <laughs> Can you smell it? No. Oh, it's I've like been bacon. Since I, was 16, I would. So. You could smell it. See, I would not be a vegetarian Viking. Okay, no. I'm gonna go find the bacon. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. See you there.